too long out for their break that are still here. Would they raise their hands and let people know that they're here? We got a few. Thank you for coming. So it turns out that I'm an elected official as well. And it also turns out that I actually have a majority of my town board here at this meeting. We don't have to do anything about public notice, but I also want to tell you that it's not, a, it's not an accident that that happened because Ellen Harrison, who you've seen all day today, and Bill Padalkley as well are residents of the town of Caroline. And so when they tell us to get up and jump, we do. <laughs> and I will tell you that those people live in your towns as well. And the process that we're talking about, because not many elected officials are here today, is for you to find those people in your town and have that dialogue with your community leaders and with your community actually beforehand. Because believe it or not, it's really easy to lead your community whenever they're pushing you so hard that you have to just run to keep up with them. So, uh, so that's really what our, our goal is to, today. And one thing I do want to just share, because I won't get this microphone again probably, is I want to uh, emphasize Chris Berger's comment earlier. Local governments are under attack. We're under attack by our governor and every one of our state legislators who signed this last year's budget and who signed the legislation to uh, enact the property tax cap. And that whole deal is about eviscerating your local governments to the point that they're only a hollow shell and they cannot advocate for the civil society. This is a big deal. Don't turn your back on it. Support your local government in doing their job to, uh, to act for, for you on your behalf. So before we get started, um, I'm going to invite uh, Bill Padalka up one more time to give us the baseline primer on waste disposal. Bill. Okay, so uh, waste disposal is where we're starting now. Um, so, you know, we, we all know a bit about this, and, um, you know, there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of waste that's produced, and I'm focusing on stuff that sort of is associated with the oil and gas industry. Um, you know, there's a lot of other kinds of waste as well. But there's, of course, a lot of things that can happen with that waste. And so I've just sketched out some of the main ways here. Uh, obviously, the, the liquid waste can get treated in waste treatment plants. The uh, things like drill cuttings, et cetera, can be disposed of in landfills. We're going to hear from Gary Abram later today more about that. Um, it can even be put back in injection wells to, 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 to get rid of it, you know, under the ground. Or, as we probably, some of you heard about, brine spreading, which we'll talk about in just a second. So the question is, what happens for all these different in terms of regulatory authority? So in terms of waste treatment plants, um, that is regulated by the state, by the DEC. Um, and uh, you probably saw from the draft SGIS, there were some proposals of what would have to happen for, say, waste from an HVHF well. Um, basically, at this point in time, there aren't facilities in New York taking the liquid waste out of wells from Pennsylvania or Ohio. Uh, there are some that could, in Niagara Falls area in particular. They would need a permit at this point from the DEC. Um, because it has not been permitted yet under any generic uh, setup. So they would have to get a permit. Uh, therefore, there would be some notice of that, and, and you know, that would appear in the environmental notice board. Uh, landfills also regulated by the DEC. However, they've already decided that the level of radioactivity uh, in the drill cuttings is not sufficient to warrant uh, re refusing that, that waste. And so, as you will hear, some of that waste is already being brought here. No permit is needed. It goes on. You have no way of knowing whether or not waste from a well site is going into your uh, nearby landfill. Uh, injection wells, uh, of which you know you probably remember Pulteney the, and the proposal to maybe convert an old um, well there to an injection well, uh, are a little bit complicated. But basically, they're a federal program uh, run by the EPA. It's called the Underground Injection Control Permit is what would be needed. Um, but also, they need a local uh, state pollution discharge emission something. Uh, permit for, from, from the DEC. Uh, so there would indeed be some amount of, of public notice on the local level uh, and various other permits are needed so that's where that sort of gets picked up and that's what happened in Pulteney when they went and needed a special permit from the, from the town board. But injection wells are basically a federal authority. And finally, brine spreading um, which is, in some sense, a form of waste disposal because the saline waste could be disposed of that way. Currently, that is not allowed in New York. Brine that is from uh, non-well sites can and is being used on roads in New York, but it has to be, again, it requires what's called a BUD or a BUD, a beneficial use determination made by the DEC. The tricky thing about that is that BUDs are not permits. Permits get environmental notice, BUDs do not. So the only way to find out about that is to really keep on track, perhaps do some foiling. But uh, as Lindsay found some of her research, um, you know, a bud might be approved in five or ten days. 
there's not much time that it takes to approve a bud. So again, that's something that would take a lot of vigilance to, to keep track of. So that's kind of the rough lay of the land as far as what's going on with regulations and waste. Um, and we're going to hear a bit more about, about some of the stuff in this session. Thank you, Bill. It's really great to have someone who's internalized all this to the point where they can set the primer for us. So, Bill, thank you so much for doing that. Our first speaker on uh, this session is Carrie, uh, Karen Edelstein. Um, she's with the New York State Coordinator for the Frack Tracker Alliance. She's worked with them since 2010 to create maps and analysis relating to oil and gas development, human and environmental health impacts, uh, that are all connected with the industry, as well as keeping tallies on municipal legislation to ban fracking. Karen, welcome. Thanks very much, John. Okay, so I think that um, many of you have seen that map that I've been keeping for several years now of the bans in moratoria, and I'm not really going to be speaking about that today because what many people don't realize is that Frack Tracker does mapping of a whole variety of other issues relating to oil and gas development, um, both in New York State and um, around the country. So, oh, look at that. So the slides got sort of rearranged, it looks like. My graphics are covering things they weren't before, but we do have staff, in addition to me, part-time in New York State, we've got several staff who are full-time in Pennsylvania, um, a person in Ohio, a couple of people in West Virginia, and a staff member in California who's looking at some of the very uh, interesting and unique uh, drilling issues on the West Coast. Uh, we've recently reorganized our, um, our landing page on the website, and it's a little hard to see from where you are, but we've divided up the, um, uh, the website into topic areas that include climate change, energy, um, economics, health, etc. And you can use that as a jumping off point or go and look directly at our um, interactive base map. Um, and then by clicking on whichever state in green, you can go and look at the maps that we've developed um, on a variety of issues in each of those states. So we'll just start, since we are talking about waste, um, one of the maps that I made early on, because I was curious, was where is waste disposed of for a variety of different topics? Not necessarily gas waste, but where are these places where waste is being processed in New York State? And those include industrial sites, um, industrial disposal sites, landfills, wastewater treatment plants. And I was particularly interested in the wastewater treatment plant locations because early on um, in 2010 and th 2011, before we started getting more savvy about uh, waste that was coming up from Pennsylvania. There were a number of wastewater treatment plants, including right here in Ithaca at Cayuga Heights, that were receiving drilling waste. And so it was just interesting to me to look around and see how many permitted wastewater um, treatment facilities there actually were. Um, the frack tracker maps are all interactive online, and so you can click on any of those points and up will pop a, um, a window that will tell you more information about each of those sites, and you can also zoom in and move around. So this brings me more to the point of what's going on with drilling waste. Um, this map has been something I've been keeping up for the last several years. Um, I've got information here. Um, it's keyed to the disposal area. So for example, um, all of the green dots in Pennsylvania are going to that large green dot in Chemung County, okay? So you can trace things and then each of those, each of the little dots will also show you what, um, what type of waste was sent there and what the quantity was. Uh, and again, totally interactive. Um, and I'll do a quick demo in a bit. So it's not just New York State, as you probably know, that's receiving drilling wastes from Pennsylvania. Um, this is when I took a look at the numbers of solid wastes that are coming in. Um, the numbers went up between 2011 and 2012 and are dropping um, slightly, but that is a little bit deceptive because the yellow, which is just looking at the first half of 2014, 
we're actually going to be up if you just do a simple doubling of, of that number. And again, the liquid waste, this is coming out of Pennsylvania to all of the different places where they, where they, they uh, deposit it, including back in Pennsylvania. Again, the numbers are not dropping. They are still, even though I think production is down a little bit in Pennsylvania, and apparently not enough to drop the waste numbers down. So let's look at where the, the drill cuttings are going. Um, you can see in the first set, those are the waste um, to Pennsylvania. The second batch of bars is to Ohio, the third to New York State. And by and large, New York State, um, most of the waste that is coming out of Pennsylvania to New York State is in um, drill cuttings, and those are going to landfills. Um, fracking fluid, we're getting a little bit. They're reusing quite a bit in Pennsylvania um, on site, and then they're also um, disposing of it off site in Pennsylvania as well. Ohio is getting a relatively lot compared to New York State and uh, elsewhere, West Virginia. Um, and again, other fluid waste, some of it's being reused, some of it's a uh, great deal of it is being um, disposed of in Pennsylvania. Ohio is really on top of things outside of the state of Pennsylvania in what they're receiving in injection wells. Um, produced fluid, again, a lot going to Pennsylvania and Ohio, some being reused. And fracturing sand as well. Not very much being reused, much is being uh, disposed of right in Pennsylvania. So, let's see. So one of the other things that I've been mapping is thanks to the, the good work of the Riverkeeper and also our friends in, in the Rochester area who've been feeding me documents. I've been taking really dry looking foil documents and turning them into informative maps. And so I don't want to contradict Bill, but in fact there is gas waste that is coming to um, fluids that are coming to New York as brine that are being legally spread on the roads. If you look at some of those permits and the BUD, the Beneficial Use Determination Letters, they will say in some cases, certainly not all, that um, flowback fluid is not allowed to be spread. And if you are going to be spreading brine, you need an extra permit and analysis. Um, brine is spread for both dust control and ice mitigation. Um, so all year round, sometimes on dirt roads, sometimes on asphalt. Um, so as I said, you've, I've been working on the, um, let's see, I've been working on the bands, but there's a lot, let's see. There's a lot of um, layers that you can still turn on and off in the frac tracker maps. Um, so for example, if I don't want to look at the bands, uh, which are here, I can turn on a layer that shows which counties, for example, have banned brine application on their roads. I'm still trying to understand whether it means county roads is roads that are county roads or all roads in the county, and I'm still not completely clear. Maybe somebody can. It depends on the ban. That's the impression I got from how they're written. Okay, back to my podium. Ooh. Thank you. Okay, and then one thing which is a little tiny bit off topic, but I really do want to include is after the um, summer of 2013, explosion in um, Quebec in Lake Megantique of the, um, a train carrying light crude from the Bakken, and then some subsequent uh, work that was done by the Healthy Schools Program and um, NRDC looking at um, oil trains that were coming through Albany. Um, the trains that come from the Bakken to Albany go through other places in New York, like Buffalo, like Rochester, like Utica, and Syracuse. So I thought, well, I can have access to census data and I can do some work looking at buffers along those train lines. And I think what I'll do is just show you this. Um, 
following the lead of the Healthy Schools Program project, I looked at um, a half mile buffer, which is the evacuation area, if there is some sort of a spill along that rail line, and it's actually a mile if there's a fire that's associated with that spill, and there certainly was quite a fire in Lake Megantique. Um, and then looked at the number of K through 12 schools inside that half mile buffer um, and mapped that throughout the state. And it turns out that there are close to 500 schools across New York State that are within a half a mile of the train lines. And how are you going to evacuate that many kids and as I had a conversation with someone else um, during one of the breaks, who's talking to the people in that half mile buffer about emergency evacuation? I, it's, it's unclear to me what's going on. And so that may be another thing for anyone who's near one of those east-west running train lines across the throughway corridor. Um, perhaps these maps can help uh, forward that discussion, which is all that Frack Tracker is about. Yes. Good point. Okay. So I think that's it uh, for now. I'm happy and I'm told to stop. There are also maps on the site. Um, contact me, fracktracker.org. Thank you, Karen Edelstein. Our next speaker is Gary Abraham, and Gary is an attorney who practices, is just a limited to public interest cases. That's it. As a solo practitioner with offices in Allegheny, New York, he practices environmental, municipal, and land use law throughout New York State, including practice before the DEC. Welcome, Gary Abraham. Thank you. In uh, my 15 minutes, I want to talk about two things. How about if I do this? I'm used, used to playing harmonica. <laughs> or I can get up really close. Um, uh, I want to talk about the waste that's going to the landfills, and then I want to talk about the powers that municipalities have to regulate it. Okay? Okay. So the, the only ruling on the books in New York is the uh, administrative DEC ruling in the Shemung landfill case that um, I was uh, uh, represented uh, the residents for the protection of Laumann and Shemung. Um, and we had found that uh, they had just started taking fracking waste in late... Um, 2009, and so we raised that as an issue, whether that's legal to do because it's radioactive, and we brought experts, Marvin Resnikov, radioactive waste expert, Tony Ingrafia, uh, geology expert, and Conrad Boltz, a health physicist from the University of Pittsburgh at the time, uh, all submitted expert reports and testified uh, as to how this stuff was generated and uh, how radioactive it is. Um, and the judge, um, and many of you know about this, I'm going to kind of fly through the, the basic facts on this. So we got thrown out uh, by the administrative law judge uh, because uh, he uh, decided that it, none of that was relevant to the, uh, the permit proceeding, which was about expanding uh, or increasing the waste acceptance rate without changing the configuration of the landfill. They weren't looking to expand the landfill, they just wanted to increase the rate at which they were able to take waste so they could take in more drill cuttings from Pennsylvania. Uh, Tom West, the attorney for the landfill, is also the attorney for Cabot, Chesapeake, and several other gas companies, so you can connect those dots yourself. Um, but anyway, uh, so, uh, most of the expert testimony was stricken from the record. Uh, Marvin Resnikov's was not, and he pointed out that uh, uh, shale, Marcellus shale, is about 25 times more radioactive than uh, anything on the surface, and the brine that surrounds the shale and has been there for millions of years has been leaching radium-226, which is water-soluble, out of the shale, and even the DEC's own uh, measurements in Appendix 13 of the S guys show that that's about 16,000 times more radioactive than background. Um, USGS has since tested 
uh, liquid coming out of these uh, 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 wells and found it's 18,000 times. Um, and the, the, the point of that is that this is not drill cuttings. This is wet drill cuttings. We observe them coming to the landfill. They're dripping out of the truck, right? And New York uh, law says uh, solid waste is anything that's got 20% solids at least. So that's 80% liquid. Um, uh, it's probably not 80% liquid, but it's probably close to 50% liquid sometimes. Um, and so the, the drill cuttings, which are relatively low level radioactivity, 25 times more radioactive than background, is accompanied by these liquids uh, that are very hot, and nobody's ever modeled that uh, and, and determined um, on a mass basis how much radioactivity is going into these landfills. But um, we appealed the uh, dismissal to the commissioner, and to his credit, the commissioner said, I'm upholding the ruling, but uh, you've raised some very important issues, so I'm tasking uh, uh, the DEC staff on remand uh, to do about a dozen different investigations into how this is monitored to ensure that the radioactivity uh, isn't coming into the landfill. Because the DEC staff in the proceeding testified that it's just not radioactive, period. It's like dirt. It's more like gravel mining waste. Um, and we wouldn't regulate that. And the judge said, um, well, then why is it going to the landfill? <laughs> and nobody ever answered that question. Um, but one of the things that we got on remand was a, uh, we, got a, we got a few things. We got the radiation portal alarms for the trucks. It turned out that, and this has been three years, um, more than three years since the ruling, uh, which came out in 2010. Um, and it turned out just this summer that DEC learned they had never calibrated the radiation portal alarm, so they weren't working all this time. And we also got a requirement that they test the leachate coming out of the landfill for radi radioactivity. And that turned out to be very uh, powerful because we, after five rounds of uh, testing, lo and behold, the leachate was getting more and more hot. Now it's up to like nine or 10 times more radioactive than background. Um, in the, at the Highland landfill, which is one of the other uh, six landfills that are taking this waste, also operated by Casella, the parent company for the uh, company that's leasing the Shemung landfill, Tom West's company, Casella, um, operates the high, owns and operates the Highland landfill, and we've been testing the runoff from the Highland landfill, and lo and behold, the stormwater runoff is about uh, six to nine times more radioactive than background. And that's, uh, so now we have conclusive evidence that it is radioactive. I mean, you can only imagine how, mu how radioactive and how much radioactivity must be put into these landfills, which were already got a lot of waste in them from before fracking to make the leachate from the whole landfill radioactive. Um, and, and we're about to bring a declaratory judgment petition to the commissioner, uh, which is not facility specific. Uh, Rachel Treichler and I and uh, Jim Bacon from New Paltz are gonna work on this, um, and we hope to get it off out the door by uh, Christmas, um, asking the commissioner, based on this evidence and all the evidence that's been generated in the intervening three or four years from Pennsylvania, which shows that the stuff is radioactive and alarms have been going off at their landfills, uh, that this is, in fact, radioactive, it's processed and concentrated, therefore it's gotta be low-level radioactive uh, norm that's uh, uh, disposed only in a licensed uh, low-level radioactive waste dump, and there are none in New York, so that would stop this all over the state. Um, so wish us luck with that. We have um, the two host communities, Concerned Citizens of Allegheny County at the Highland Landfill, Residents for the Protection of Laumann and Chemung, uh, People for a Healthy Environment, uh, Community Watershed Coalition from Westchester County, and the Sierra Club will all be petitioners on that, and if there are any other groups that want to be petitioners, just contact me. Um, and a lot of the details uh, are posted on my website, all the papers that were submitted in the case, even the stricken ones, uh, at GaryAbraham.com. Um, so let me turn now in the remaining time to what municipalities can do. And municipalities uh, have the authority, well, let me, let me back up a minute. 
uh, remind you that in the Dryden and Middlefield case that was just uh, recently decided by the Court of Appeals, the authority to ban fracking is based on the town's zoning power. Even before these cases, though, the town's power under the state constitution, uh, the U.S. Constitution, uh, New York town law, which actually identifies dumps, uses the word dumps, as something that towns have the authority to regulate and ban, um, and, and municipal home rule law, a whole series of authorities that go beyond the authorities that the Dryden and Middlefield case uh, are based on have been used for decades now um, to authorize towns to ban uh, w waste disposal. Uh, and you can specify the kind of waste disposal. So all, ki all four kinds of waste disposal that you saw on the slide, waste treatment plants, injection wells, landfills, and road spreading could all be banned or regulated, uh, limited, restricted, the location could be restricted, but you know I would certainly argue that they should be banned um, if the town is sufficiently concerned and does some research and has robust findings accompanying the local law that bans these things, saying here's what we did, we did this research. In fact, you should, uh, if you're a town board, you should be appending a bibliography of all the things you did. And you can pass a moratorium for 12 months in order to do this kind of research. You know, a moratorium on all waste from uh, fracking uh, sites or well sites, all well waste, and list it. List road spreading, road brine, uh, you know, drill cuttings. Uh, uh, Highland and Shemung and some of the other landfills in New York take um, sludge and solidification solids, uh, which are the waste product of uh, uh, water treatment plants. Um, and that stuff is, 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 can be expected to be very radioactive because it's got more liquid in it. It's the liquid that's the most radioactive stuff. Um, and the most recent case uh, that uh, upheld the town's power to ban landfills uh, came out on uh, November 14th in the Fourth Department, uh, Jones v. Town of Carroll. In that case, these constitutional and uh, home rule powers were held to authorize towns, in contrast to zoning, to eliminate a vested right to use 50 acres for a landfill. This guy who brought the case, uh, the dis disgruntled landfill operator, uh, brought the case against the town, which didn't want the landfill. And uh, it went all the way up to the fourth department. In fact, this was the third time it went up to the fourth department. Um, and that's a great case to read because that recites all of these authorities that I just rattled off. So the good news is that towns that want to can ban all forms of waste management uh, that have anything to do uh, with fracking waste. Um, so now you know why it's so bad, and now you know what you can do about it. Thank you. Pardon me? So, somebody had a question? Town of Carroll in Chautauqua County. Okay. Thank you, Gary. So we've heard from Karen Edelstein talking about how we can communicate with one another. We've heard about Gary, um, from Gary talking about the framework that we're working within, the legal framework. And now we have Julie Huntsman, who uh, is a veterinarian, but also um, she was elected to the Segal Town Board in 2011, which was subsequent to her efforts to ensure a fracking ban there. She's a co-coordinator of elected officials to protect New York State, a nonpartisan network of officials from all 62 counties, currently having 836 members. So Julie, come join us. I'm not sure if I'm going to know how to operate this thing. I want to tell you something. I am terrible, terrible at PowerPoints, all right? I'm generally all right at talking, but uh, even though I love visuals, I'm not so good at PowerPoints. So anyway, that's beautiful Otsego Lake, town of Otsego. It, could, it looks very much like a scene from a whole lot of gorgeous upstate New York towns, and that's, uh, that's just one pretty picture. All right, let's see if I can do this. Here's a test. Dun, dun, dun. Oop, no, wrong way. No, it's it's still that was wrong. the right one. It's the one on the at three o'clock. At three o'clock. 
I did that. I did that. I did that. Ta da! A lot of it is missing. Anyway, so <laughs> as a matter of fact, most of the slide is missing. That's all right. <laughs> I just said I don't like slides anyway. Okay, so town of Otsego had a lot of awareness about fracking and rah, 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 and we were very supportive of our sister town of Middlefield. Um, I was pretty active in the, the push to get a ban, so I got the ban in May 2011. I uh, was elected to the board that year. In 2012, we enacted a road protection ordinance so our roads wouldn't get torn up by uh, convoys of frack trucks. Um, so the missing piece was, well, what do we do about the waste? Gosh, we better get on this. So in early 2014, uh, January, I said, um, oh, okay. All right, I'll just keep talking then. So um, I worked with another town councilwoman, Karina Frank. And we said, well, gosh, who's done this? And so we kind of figured out at that time, 12 counties had, had done this, okay? It's like, gee, what towns have done this? Uh, I don't know. Does anybody, like, really know that? I don't know. Okay. So we'll crib one from one of the counties. So we did that. I read several of them. I didn't read all 12 of them. I read five or six of them. And Onondaga County had just passed theirs in December. We're working on January. So, it's, okay, this, this looks reasonable. Um, it banned um, brine and other forms of frack waste from all roads in the county and all real property in the county and it also banned it from any water treatment facility. Um, th that's what I'm doing right there. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So we used uh, Onondaga County's law as a template and, um, and went, went from there. Is it time for me to mess with it, Bill? Oh. Yeah, Bill. All right. That's what we're doing. Oh, I did it wrong again. Sorry. Da, da, da. Okay, missing piece, da, da, da. we talked about that. Yucky fracking pictures. <laughs> okay, okay. do any of y'all know Chip Northrop? Uh -huh. Really? How about that? Strange, he never has anything to say about this topic. Um, so, anywho, so, you know, he likes to send missives to people and, and says, you know, do it right and don't leave anything out and do it my way. How about it? you person you. So we wanted to be really careful that we didn't leave out any kind of waste. So um, so someone couldn't say, oh, well, this is from an oil well, not a natural gas well. Uh -huh. so, so we're very careful in the way we define the waste in our local law, our town of Otsego law, and, and other municipalities have done that as well, other counties. So for instance, okay, it's natural gas and oil exploration or extraction activities, natural gas and oil waste. Treated or untreated frack flowback from oil and gas wells. Treated or untreated produced water from oil and gas wells. Treated or untreated brine, fracking fluid, drilling mud, drill cutting. So we didn't want to leave anything out. Okie dokie. Yes, include everything. Okay. All righty. Yes, we want to include everything. Complete prohibitions. Um, okay, Nassau County uh, downstate. There's a lot of water treatment facilities downstate. A lot of people down there, um, and they prohibited frack waste at wastewater treatment. Okay, and then these counties prohibit road spreading. Uh, on the on the road spreading, it's a little bit different. Again, it depends on the ban. Erie County and Ulster County. Okay, <laughs> this is my version of a fancy map. That's yeah. as fancy as I can get. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, um, Erie County and Ulster County um, just their language was more restrictive. It said, well, you can't spread this stuff on county maintained roads or county owned property. Okay. The rest of these, uh, the rest of these counties um, are more, it's more broad. It's like, no, you can't have it on any, um, any property here, any real property here or any road in the county. Uh, I should have Clinton County up there with a little green ball. I didn't get that. All right, so Clinton County really went all out Okay, very complete definition of waste and complete prohibitions. And they did something else, too. They said regardless of BUDs, that is the only ordinance that says that. Okay, so it's kind of the, it gets the gold star, uh, Clinton County. I also want to say that our neighboring uh, Schoharie County uh, has a very, very good ordinance. They don't mention waste treatment facilities, but they mention uh, waste storage facilities. 
Uh, and that's the only ordinance besides Clinton that mentions that as well. Now, um, this is supposed to say Otsego County. <laughs> Otsego County doesn't have any such ordinance. Um, the farthest they were going to go was a, a, a stipulation in their county snow and ice contracts, thank you, um, that said you can't use it to de-ice, to de and that's as far as they would go. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. This is going well. Okay, there it is again. I'm so proud. <laughs> it's not a Karen Edelstein map, obviously. Okay, the little blue circles there, the happy little blue circles are um, uh, towns that have passed frac bans. Okay, so there's Otsego. That's the town of Otsego there. We just passed ours Wednesday night. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Wah, wah. Thank you so much. I was hoping to get that accomplished by like spring. <laughs> So we get the draft. Uh, I got it as good as I could get it, you know, cribbing from Onondaga's uh, ordinance and doing my own finding section, of course, cribbing from other sources, but I thought it was pretty good. Giving it to the attorney. She lawyers it up. Uh, we all consider it. We have the public hearing. Um, and then we send it to the county. They look at it a month. It comes back. And officially they say, it's okay. Go ahead. Officially. Okay. Um, but then we did send it to the county attorney to see if she had anything to say about it. And in three months, she had nothing to say about it. So we passed it. Okay, so there you go. Anyway, so a lot of jibber-jabber. Again, the green stars uh, are the counties that have these ordinances. Um, the other blue circles, uh, Ulster County is town of Hurley. They just passed a resolution about uh, road spreading and said they would not do anything about fracking in general until the state came out with its rules. So interesting uh, stance. Uh, Sullivan County, there's a town called Tustin. You might know the town Tustin. It's near Tustin. I'm sorry, I can't even say it right. Um, it's near Narrowsburg. They have this really impressive land use law. And this is, you know, one of the nerdier things you could, you could kind of be jealous of. But if you'll go to... <laughs> Hey, I'm a municipal official, you know, land use law. We do that kind of stuff. The town of Tustin zoning law has a comprehensive uh, section of prohibited uses. So I'll run it by you. I, I hope these are all legal. It sounds fabulous. Okay, prohibited uses. Disposal of radioactive material, injection well, land application facility, large-scale water use, natural gas and or petroleum exploration activities, natural gas and or petroleum extraction, Exploration, production, waste disposal, storage facility, waste dump, compression facility, natural gas processing facility, non-regulated pipeline, underground injection, and underground natural gas storage. So that's pretty darn comprehensive. So, and then they have a very complete uh, waste, waste prohibition to go along with all that. It's town of Tustin, okay? Like I said, Sullivan County. It makes me want to go visit them. It's T-U-S-T-E-N. Yeah, I know what it's... Oh, and that's, that's in their beautiful land use law, which is dated March of 2012, okay? So they were on it. No, let's just keep going. She's got only two Okay, minutes. this is... Yeah, here we go. That's Karen's map. Okay. All right, a great reference, and it's not the only one. Riverkeeper has a model ordinance. It is a thing of beauty, Okay, if, it had, if I had known about it in January, I just would have used that. It's wonderful, but it wasn't there, right, Ellen? Okay, I just met Ellen today. She's pretty amazing, among lots of amazing people. Ellen Weininger, and um, Grassroots Environmental Education has a lot of information on this, too, and you have a model ordinance there. So, dun dun da we race to the finish. Okay, uh, again, Clinton County, fabulous. So take home message. Go to Riverkeeper, look at the model ordinance. It's there. Um, that model ordinance is going to go on elected officials to protect New York's website. And we're going to start really, really pushing this and providing that resource to local electeds. And they were all invited, by the way. Okay? We, we did send the message out. Dun, dun, dun. And anyway, thank you. <laughs> That's a leftover Halloween picture. We, <laughs> we got to keep smiling. Okay, so I already know there's a ton of questions and people are getting lined up um, near the microphones, right? We have to be very efficient. Uh, quick questions. We have 20 minutes. Right, timer? 
I just want to say that we did the Tustin ordinance. It is comprehensive. If we did your town's uh, law, you've got all of that stuff in there unless uh, in some cases supervisors might have asked if particular items come out, like compressor stations. But um, the, Gary's going to uh, talk a mo in a moment here about using model or, or specimen ordinances. Um, you don't need to do that. If you go to Tustin's, you liked it, you don't already have one, we'll send you what you need, um, including the findings, so that we don't run afoul of what Gary's about to tell you. Thank you. And I would, uh, before Gary addresses that, I just wanted to make an observation that it appears, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that towns can do this and counties can do this. And that was news to me. So, Gary, you want to address the questions at hand? Well, you can't just mm -hmm. crib somebody's law or use a model ordinance. You have to show that you, you're the decision maker, and let's assume it's a town board, did the research. You have to show that you knew what you were doing. You can't just take somebody else's law. Then you'll get sued by the project developer, and he'll say, well, this was arbitrary. They, they just took somebody else's law. They didn't know what they were doing. And, you know, you have to understand, it's all political. <laughs> you know, you're going to go to court at the county Supreme Court. It's entirely political. And if he doesn't want uh, uh, this town to have a ban, you're out of there. You're, it's a little less pol political on appeal. But, you know, you've got to spend all that money to get there. So make yourself lock solid by, as I said, uh, provide a bibliography showing exactly what you, what you read and have a set of findings that accompany your local law showing in detail this is what you found. And this, this is why you're banning this. It's not, you know, the reasons why it's harmful. Uh, and, and in your definitions, you want to say, you know, what is radioactivity? For example, you can't just ban radioactivity. Uh, everything's radioactive. I mean, the background radioactivity in New York is 0 0.85 picocuries per gram. So, you know, you, you, you have to have, you have to ban something more than that or else you're banning everything and then you'll get thrown out of court or your, your law will get thrown out because it's, too, it's overly broad. And, and it also indicates you didn't know what you were talking about. Um, the other issue I wanted to just address real briefly is county bans versus town bans. Uh, towns trump counties, counties don't trump towns. So if a county has a ban and a town in the county says, well, we don't want a ban, we want fracking, that's too bad. In that town, there's going to be fracking. Um, but if a town says we don't want it or we don't want the waste and the county doesn't do anything, then the town's law prevails. So towns trump counties, but not the other way around. Okay. But if the county passed something and it wasn't challenged, the county could ban it. So counties do not, in New York State, do not have land use authority. That's just a fact. They have health and safety and that sort of authority, and that's what they can do some of this stuff. And they can always talk about what they're going to do with their own property. But I just want to go back. If you liked Tustin's language, um, what Gary said is, is accurate. But when we do those things, we give you uh, literally five pages single-spaced of findings and the findings he's talking about. And when we have you uh, pass one of these laws at your town board meeting, you, absolutely, you actually read each of those findings out. They go into the record, and they're actually on our laws part of the law so that if you do get challenged. And the fact that you got those from somebody else, if you actually adopt those findings, I respectfully disagree, you're not going to lose on that. Although I absolutely agree uh, on appeal. I absolutely agree that at the Supreme Court level, remember the Supreme Court in New York State's the lowest or first level, I absolutely agree you have no idea what's going to happen at that level. Okay. Thank you. My name is Bill Kitchen. Um, if Sandra's head's not spinning too much, I think she's going to be sending out an email shortly asking people to come to Morrisville on Thursday night. And I believe she's going to ask people to be wearing something in blue. And the point is so that when FERC looks out in the audience and they see the orange shirts, they know what that means. Uh, people aren't in orange. They don't know. Are they with us? Are they against, you know, are they for fracking against it? And at a glance, that'll tell FERC. And it'll also tell somebody like me who's going to be there and doesn't know a lot of other people that take my position on it. Um, just by looking and seeing they have blue on, it'll give us some support. Um, the other day, I was bouncing around the internet, and I came across this geology, do, 
Utica.com, uh, Utica Shale, the hidden giant below the Marcellus. And I learned some stuff there that maybe you know some of it or all of it, but one thing it showed was that in Ohio, permit, drilling permits in the Utica Shale went from zero in 2010 to 70 a month in 2013. So as of a year ago, there were drilling permits, 1,200 drilling permits, and now there probably are a lot more. Um, the other thing it showed is how much bigger, which most of us know, the Utica Shale covers an area-wise area than the Marcellus in New York, which is probably adds to it by 50%. And anyway, what I got out of that was, I thought that gave me permission to talk about the Utica Shale drilling in Ohio to people that aren't above the Marcellus in New York, but who are above the Utica that the Utica is not going to get drilled right away if fracking comes to New York, but it's something that might come in the future and add that geographic area and all the people that live in that area um, to our group of opposition. And just Thank the last you. quick thing is about Obama's deal with China, which people say is good and hopefully it is, but it makes me wonder, especially after I heard a lot today, it's based on reducing your emissions below a certain level and I just wonder how that is possible if we're not uh, measuring emissions, which it appears we're not. And so it seems like that's something that we should talk about a little bit, and we all know where he is on, on fracking. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, hey. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for doing this. Uh, knowledge is power. I have two, uh, one question and uh, one comment, and I will be very quick, I promise. Uh, one of the things that I've observed today uh, that stood out for me is, one, what was just said about the DEC being at that hearing or for a hearing and saying uh, that, that there was no radiation, and yes, there was. So it, could they be sued? I mean, how many times have they been lying to us? And that, that really stands out for me, because if they could be caught in their act, that, that, that's a help to us, isn't it? Um, and the other thing was uh, the other speaker, I can't remember who it was, who talked about how things were segmented and broken apart in order to sneak in, you know, getting something done. I thought that was also very, very important. But again, these are the tactics, and, and to call them on them is so powerful. And the fact that they lied like that, I mean, that something has to be done about it, I think. Um, my name is Betty Eck. Um, I'm from kind of the poster child from Chemung County, um, land, known as the land of dump baby dump. And um, we are sort of ground zero for dumping um, drill cuttings, okay? So we're fighting back. A lot of people are fighting back. This Thursday, I know there's conflicts. We should all get ourselves clones so we can be more than one place. But um, we're having a forum in Horseheads on the issue of the county um, increasing the size of its, its size of its landfill by 131 percent to take drill cuttings. We've been fighting back our legislature, and um, with this forum, and I want to emphasize the fact that go after more than one issue, because um, Rachel Treichler is going to speak about the radioactive aspects of drill cutting, but. We live in what sometimes we call Darwin's waiting room, and science with radioactivity doesn't fly. But what does fly is we're taking garbage from, 20% of the garbage comes from us, the rest comes from other places. People don't like that. And when you can tell them that Rob Astorino says, frack the southern tier like crazy, but he has signed a law in Westchester County um, banning fracking, they say, oh, what's with that? Um, and so I hope you can come. I also uh, urge you to take advantage of two things. W we had um, a full page, Colorado, in the Star Gazette last week about all these issues, okay? It's also going in tomorrow about all these issues. We could not have done this without two sources, so get a little help from your friends, okay? The Mountain Waterkeeper Alliance gave us a $2,000 grant, and they want to give away this money, trust me. So if you have a small group, they're encouraging people to apply for it. The other thing, 
who happens excuse, to be behind me. Excuse me. I, we're, I think that we're trying to keep this to not being a lot of announcements. We're trying okay. to just speak to particular sure. actions that we've taken locally. So if you have something else to share with that, but if you have announcements, we have a board up here to put them on. Okay. I'm just saying it's one route to go locally to understand you can approach something from more than one side. People don't want the landfill from elsewhere. You can get help from grassroots environmental education. So, okay. so please don't use this as your announcement venue. Um, we have a board for that. But if you have comments that are specific to this issue that we've been talking about, waste, or a question of the presenters, that's what this time is for. Um, and Joe is saying we have five minutes. OK, I'll try to be quick. I'm Ellen Weininger from Grassroots Environmental Education. And we've been working on these county bans across New York State and uh, in Connecticut as well. Um, I just wanted to address a few comments that were made. One is that according to uh, uh, Julie, uh, Julie Weatherington Rice, um, you cannot take uh, ca casual measurements in the field of radioactivity. And having those, those alarm uh, devices on the trucks or at the landfill is inadequate. Uh, gamma uh, emitters cannot be measured in the field and require special uh, testing in a lab, um, and it's much more involved than that. And the other point is that the EPA testing, which has been considered the so-called gold standard for testing for radioactivity, which is their test for measuring radioactivity in water, is not, not um, acceptable for testing radioactivity in uh, radio uh, radioactive fracking waste because the, uh, the high concentration in the fracking waste is so exceedingly high that um, the measure the test the co precipitation method just doesn't work so um, gamma uh, spectrometry is really the gold standard for that and uh, the difference is very significant the difference between EPA's results may be something like a few percent uh, versus the gamma spectrometry which comes up at 91 percent I mean the difference the differential is huge the other thing is the um, perhaps misconception that the waste has to come in form of some brine through uh, the through the buds you know that the, you're approached by industry or um, or some other entity to either let them give it away to you or purchase it but keep in mind the the uh, waste products can actually be dewatered and what remains is a salt product. And if you ask, a lot of counties or municipalities will say, we're not accepting this waste. We would never do that. But if you ask them, they do not know what's in their salt products. There's no disclosure of ingredients. And New York State contracts provides no disclosure of ingredients. And there are companies out there that uh, process this waste into salt pellets. And uh, they are distributing and selling this as a product. But unwittingly, many municipalities and counties are purchasing this. And so th I thank am you a resource. so much. I won't say anything more. Um, there are DVDs and other advo advocacy materials outside where you can get them from me directly. Thank you. Yep. Please. Hi, John Lachelle, again. Been in the waste industry for 35 years in farming. Uh, I had a boss that was in the waste industry for 30 years plus. Uh, he taught me about the laws, that when you had a law and something was created because of a nuisance, of odor, water pollution, uh, vector of bugs or whatever. Once that law was made, it was control. It didn't change. Everybody got it. That's not so anymore. That's changed. We have problematics of uh, be careful what you wish for because you have a situation to where uh, problem solution. If you don't have a solution, the problem still rises. The law can't stand because it's, it's still flooding you one way or another. As we had rep uh, representation on uh, radiation. A dentist shoots you with radiation. Is there a piece of uh, poison in there that's shooting you? He protects your chest and your heart, but he shoots it right through your brain as he's doing it at your teeth. But again, it's created with electricity. It's not created because there's a piece of uh, kryptonite in there or something. Uh, planet or the uh, island of uh, Bikini Island had so much radiation put on it, it was equivalent to a, uh, 25 years of every day shooting off a Nagasaki bomb for 25 years. We just had a thousand uh, test plots in Nevada. We have uh, all of our nuclear power systems of, of ships and everything else are starting to be retired right now. Russia's parking their ships in Siberia. The U.S. is putting theirs so, in the... Uh, so right. I think, appreciate your time. Yeah, because we're trying to stay on topic here, and there's a lot of information to be shared. 
So we have actually one minute, which means the next speaker has to be really quick. I can do that. All right. Hi, my name is Liz Moran. Um, I work for Environmental Advocates of New York. I just wanted to briefly put out there, I am doing a comprehensive report on fracking waste in New York. I am looking for individuals that live near or um, near land landfills that have been accepting fracking waste. I'm looking for your personal stories to incorporate um, as we do our presentations on this research. Um, so I can put my contact information on the board, but please reach out to me. I have cards I can give you, uh, my personal card, so you can reach out to me, and I'd love to talk to you about your experiences. Um, and the one question I had was, um, on Frack Tracker, the maps that show where the landfills are, is there a way to show on those maps where the leachate is going to what wastewater treatment facilities? Thanks. The easy answer is I don't have that information, but if somebody does have it, I would be happy to figure out a way to add that in because I think it's a vitally important piece of uh, uh, of information to get out to the public. Thank so, you, Kira. Yeah. So this is the end of the session, and I know there are more questions and statements people wanted to make, and that's um, unfortunately we only have so much time, and there's a lot of great energy here. So now, um, actually, Ellen Harrison wants to have us channel that energy. Ellen, welcome back. <laughs>